All right. So I think we're going to get started now. Uh, it's recording, so we're good with that. And I'm going to go ahead and say welcome, everyone. Um, we're very happy that you are here. Um, this is the session training session for searching and setting up or setting up and searching OCLC connection, um, which is something that many of us will have to do as we transition or when we transition to Folio. But as we transition, hopefully you'll get some practice ahead of time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see my slides. Um, I should just make this window bigger so it's not so small. All right. Can everyone see my slides or are you seeing something else? Okay, great. Um, here we go. All right. So, like I said, welcome. This is a, this session um, is about OCLC connection. It's how to set it up and how to search for bibliographic records in connection. Um, my name is Kevin Kishimoto, and I work at the uh, music library as a metadata librarian. And I'm joined here today with four of my colleagues, uh, Greta de Grote, Magda God, uh, Margaret Hughes, and Robert Rohrbacher. Um, and they all work in a metadata department over in Lathrop Library. Um, okay, so let's it's that the way this uh, today's session is going to go is we, we have a lot of material to cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to speak or, or do demos for about the first 50 minutes. We're going to try to fit everything in there uh, up until two o'clock. And then after two o'clock, we are all planning on, or I hope we are all planning on staying online. And if anyone has any uh, questions that they would like answered uh, from the session, or if they would just like to jump on in and get some practice going. Um, we'll be around to, to help out with that. Um, this training session is being recorded and um, I will post the recording somewhere. I'm not exactly sure how we're doing this yet since this is one of the first official training sessions for Folio at Stanford, um, but we'll figure that out and I'll send out the announcement to that uh, once, the, once the recording has been posted. Um, also, um, to follow up after the after today's session, we have created a Slack channel called Connection Users. Um, this is meant to be a channel that will enable um, Stamp Stanford staff who use Connection to communicate with one another, and is meant to be a place for like tips and tricks and advice or asking specific questions about something. Um, we don't want this channel to be a tech support channel. Um, if you need help installing the software on your computer, I think that's something that is better served by um, going straight to your local tech support person. Um, so the first question, I just put this down here at the bottom. Um, I didn't want to create a new slide for it, but why do we need to learn how to search an OCLC connection? Um, there are several reasons for this. Um, OCLC connection is one way to access all of the bibliographic records. I should probably speak a little slower. Access all the bibliographic records in the OCLC WorldCat database. And um, unlike Symphony, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not too familiar with Voyager, but unlike Symphony, Folio does not have a tool like SmartPort. You can't search. OCLC directly in Folio. Um, instead, you have to search the OCLC database directly using either Connection or maybe WorldCat and find the record you want to import. And then you can import the record by using the OCLC number. Um, so that's why we need to, in order to perform functions like copy cataloging or acquisitions, you know, receiving or ordering, or even original cataloging, we need to know how to use OCLC um, because we don't have a lot of the features that we did in Symphony. It's not that it's worse, it's just different. Um, I personally like OCLC connection better than Symphony anyway. That's me. Um, okay, so today, uh, today, what are we covering today? We're gonna cover the basic setup and login for OCLC connection. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the client. Actually, we're going to talk a lot about the OCLC client, and we're going to talk a little bit about the browser version. Um, 
we're going to um, talk about using OCLC connection to search OCLC database for bib records. And we're going to talk about different types of searches, a browse search, a keyword search, a directed search, which I think is called a guided search, actually. So I will have to correct that on the, on the slide. Um, we're going to have some special search tips for common searches and maybe some slightly uncommon uh, numeric searches, um, how to search for non-Latin scripts. Um, this is important for our Stanford collections, um, how to search for different media formats. Um, we're going to demo how to import a single bibliographic record into Folio. And we're going to stop there. Oh, well, we're going to, and then we're going to, um, talk about customizing the user interface um, in connection. I'm just going to cover a few things that I've found. Um, what we're not covering in today's session, um, we're not covering how to search the authority file in connection and what that means. Um, we're not covering any uh, cataloging in today's session. That is editing bibliographic records in connection or in folio or creating original bibliographic records in connection. Um, we're not going to uh, make any judgments on selecting the best bibliographic record for your needs because that is very work specific. What do you need when you're doing your specific task? Um, and we can't make any sort of wide sweeping judgments on those. And there are so many advanced features um, in OCLC connection and different tips and tricks that we just don't have time to cover. So we're just going to um, cover the basics today. And at that, I believe, oh no, we have one more slide. Um, okay, so to, in today's session, if you are gonna be logging in and practicing, you will need a login and password to get into OCLC connection. Um, if you have one supplied by your department, great. Perfect. If you don't have one supplied by your department yet or your library, then um, please use this. I'm going to paste this into the chat. This other link that I have here, I'm going to copy and paste that link into chat. Um, we're still having issues with uh, getting everyone permission to get into this Google Drive, but you should at least have access to this um, to this document. I think, yeah, this is the document. But this is a document of uh, links to some locally created documentation for OCLC connection, and um, we're going to. I'm going to keep adding to it, and I hope the others will too. And at that, I think it's time to switch over to Robert. So I'm going to stop my share. OK, get my screen shared. Um, there we go. OK, so that's up. And um, okay, now how do I, okay. <sighs> this isn't working out quite right. Resume, share. And then how do I get into the actual program itself from here? Uh, oh, me and my. Sorry, having a little bit of trouble now getting back to my actual screen. Once uh, I've shared this, how to... 
Oh, am I? Okay. So, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm not quite used to doing these presentations. Okay. So to actually log on, we've got this log on icon. We click on it. That's kind of strange, but. And here in the authorization box is where you put that nine digit authorization number you've gotten. And then the password will go in the password box. And then just click on OK. And we get a nice welcome message, which we can close out. Now, the, the, first, the first setting I'm going to show you is how to have the authorization kind of permanently show up in your login box so you don't have to always remember that number or type it in. And um, let's see here. We'll go to the tools menu. Um, under options, there's the authorization tab. And um, in the authorization box, you put the authorization number and the password. And you can give it a name, although that's not necessarily very necessary if you've only got one authorization. authorization. We click on apply, we can close this out. Now, if I log off again and then log on again, I've got it right there. I don't have to bother with typing all of that in. Click OK. And we're in, in the client. A couple of other quick settings under tools and options that are useful to know about. Um, the one is under the fonts, under the fonts tab. You can change the uh, font size for the record display as well as the how large they are. You know, display in the uh, results lists, which you know is is good if, depending if you find the uh, defaults too small or something like that. Um, the other thing is under general. There are, or where the session timers are, you can set up to a certain extent, you know, how much time connection will, you know, stay, will keep you logged on, you know, if you're not using it. Also, you can have it set to give you a warning before it, before it logs you off. Um, the other thing is for people who work with records that have non-Latin script under the um, international tab is where you'll find settings for, you know, how things will hand, how 880 fields, which are the fields with the parallel script, how those will be handled in, in record export and things like that. Um, Another thing that's kind of useful to know about is you can move the toolbars in the client around. If this, I don't know how well this is going to show up over Zoom, but in front of these little toolbar boxes, there's these very light gray dots. And if you hover your mouse cursor over them, you get um, this little four, this this um, it turns into an icon with four po pointers, and then you can use that to, um, you know, move the toolbars around. You know, however, however you like them. That's always kind of a nice little way to customize things. Um, Let's see, I think that's about it for basic settings in the client. Um, let's see here. Um, if I, and I'll quickly show you how to log on for those of you who have to use the, um, who have to use the uh, browser. Um, let's see here, to um, 
get to the connection browser, that should be, let's see, I've got it bookmarked. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be at the following URL. I'll, I'll end up putting that into the, um, the chat box. It's connection.oclc.org. And then here you've got the, got the, uh, we have the sign on where you can enter the authorization. And there we are in. Have to make my password manager go away, but oh well. Ah. Yeah, the problem is the uh oh well, we don't have to worry about that too much. Um the one thing I should mention is it's not showing. I don't think it's showing up anywhere, but sometimes you will see a small little box in the lower right hand corner. And sometimes that shows up and sometimes it doesn't. It's not anything to um to worry about. Oh, here it is. I don't know if anybody if people can see that, but this will this will come up sometimes. Nothing to worry about. And sometimes then when you click on the, the actual browser window, it goes away. Um, the browser com compared to the client doesn't have nearly as much options as for set, you know, for setting things up for personalized settings. If you go to the general tab, there are preferences, but um, it's a bit more, it's a bit more limited. And maybe most disappointing, you 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 can't set something up for your authorizations like you can in the client. Although if you have a, a password manager, you could use that. Um, I think I, I think for the uh, for the browser, that's probably about enough. You know, you've got the general options and some you know, the general options, you know, you can customize the interface a little bit and get some um, options for uh, keystroke shortcuts. Um, I think that's going to be enough for the browser. Um, I'm going to, in the chat, I'll put the, uh, the link for the uh, browser, as well as a link to the um, to some further instructions on how to set things up in connection client from the OCLC website, which goes into an awful lot of detail. Oh, and I should also mention quickly that with the browser, OCLC is going to stop supporting it in April of next year. At that point, people who are using the browser will go over to a product called Record Manager. Um, we, I don't think we've got that quite set up for Stanford yet, but, you know, when, when things get to that point, you know, we'll let people know so that they can, you know, make the transition. And I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Margaret, I believe is next, or is it Greta? Okay. It's Greta who's next. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me share my screen. I can here. Okay, can you hear me? Everybody, can you hear an echo or anything? Is it yes, okay? No, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, I think I'm on. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to searching. Uh, Margaret and Maga will do some more um, detail. Um, I'll start by saying that there are a lot of ways to search in OCLC. You can often make do with just a few of your favorite searches, and it's kind of easy to forget about the rest. But remember that they're there in case you need to do something um, more complicated um, on occasion. If you want the full set of options, you can check the OCLC searching documentation, and you'll find that there are often multiple ways of 
doing the same kind of search. There are two main ways of searching um, through the command line and through the guided search in the search box. The simplest is using the command line, which uh, should be up in your toolbar. And um, let me go back over to OCLC and um, behind the, <laughs> let me click that off. Okay, so I can see the, the um, this is the little box for the command line. It should be up in your toolbar and um, very handy thing. Um, you can do a search in this and it'll be a, um, a um, record search for the, uh, for keywords. So for example, I can just search the words OCLC connection and hit that. And what I get is too many results. Um, but you see that there are results that are, um, that are uh, broken down by format, by dates to help you navigate this. But you can see that that's really too many results. Um, so unless you're looking for like visual materials of which there's only two. But um, you can um, um, search um, by a specific index. And uh, probably most of us will be searching for titles. So I'll just give you a quick introduction to the title indexes. For example, you can do TI with a colon, and that will be a title keyword search instead of a whole record keyword search. So if I hit that, you can see I get a much more manageable set of records here. So this, this is um, with OCLC connection in the title. You can see from the, from the results that they're kind of all over the title field. Um, you can also do a title exact phrase if you replace the the um, um, colon with an equal sign, DTI equals, you can do an exact title phrase. And you can see here, I got only one result. Um, and, and that's actually in the title added entry field down here. But it you know, sorted through all those ones and found the, the one record that had only OCLC connection in the title field. Um, you can also do a browse in this fashion. For example, if you do SCA, oh, did my S show up there? SCA, and then with um, the TI and equal sign, and hit that, you'll see that you get a, uh, a left anchored browse with your search term um, in the middle highlighted. So you can see there's that one record again, and you can see that there's um, um, uh, the other things that begin with that search. So those are all very handy searches that I use all the time. Um, browsing, actually, you can do this in another fashion. You can, um, there's an the icon here, you can click, and it'll show you um, a different, um, a different browse screen, one that's a, a sort of a dedicated one. You can also browse different fields here um, with this drop down menu, but I'll do the title whole phrase search. And you notice you get a browse again, and you'll notice also the browse actually has slightly different results. And I have not analyzed which one is searching which, and perhaps the B subfields included in some of them. But um, um, I'll leave that to you to explore which 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 browse you prefer. There's also um, uh, up here in uh, the menu items. If you go to cataloging, browse, and WorldCat, you'll also pull up that screen. So I think that's all for me to now. Margaret next. Thank you, Greta. That was great. Uh, I will now attempt to share my screen. Oh, let me stop sharing. Sorry. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think I'm successfully sharing my screen. Um, OCLC Connection Client is really an amazing product. I just have to take a moment to say the functionality is really incredible. It's quite robust. There is, are at least two and usually three different ways to do the same thing. So if you like mousing, you can do everything via your mouse. If you're a keyboard person and you want to stay off the mouse, there are key, key commands for everything. So uh, just keep that in mind that there's a lot to um, to um, lot, lot to learn about OCLC's functionality. What I am going to demo for you right now is what uh, OCLC calls a directed search or a guided search. 
<laughs> directed or a guided search. And we can get to that uh, search functionality by starting with this um, icon here on the upper left hand corner with the magnifying glass on it. You can also get there by uh, clicking on the cataloging tab. And, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, I can't see all my tabs because part of it is hidden behind the, the Zoom control menu. So we'll just use go with the icon for now, but trust me, you can get to it under searching. You can pull down and get to it that way. So I'll start by bringing up uh, the keyword and numeric search box. So this is the box right here that we will be um, starting with to, to for me to demo. Now this is called a guided search because you can select the index and you can use these Boolean operators and or or not to uh, further refine your searching. There are a number of great features right here on this screen. You have the option to retain your search or not retain your search if you're doing a number of searches for very similar works by the maybe by the same author but different titles you might want to retain your search. You can, um, so in this pull down menu, you can see some of the indexes. These are the main indexes that I use to search for bibliographic records in Connection Client. This is sort of a short list, maybe 12 or so. This is not every index available. If you want more indexes that aren't listed here, perhaps I want to search an LCCN, a Library of Congress card number. I can click this plus sign right here and now, you'll see that we have a whole lot of different indexes to choose from. You can search MeSH subject headings and National Library of uh, Canada call numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, if you want to customize your short list, you can do that here with this icon. If you hover over it, any icon, it tells you what it is. So this will customize your short list of keyword indexes if you want a very specific list for your purposes. So, um, we can do a number of uh, different kinds of searches. We can combine all kinds of indexes. You can combine, combine any index you can think of. You can combine um, personal names, titles, uh, numeric searches, anything at all. You can even limit your searches. Say, for example, I'm looking for uh, a record an RDA record. Maybe we don't want an AAC or two record or some other kind of record. You can even limit by descriptive conventions RDA. You can uh, use that to limit your search just to RDA records. So there's quite a bit of functionality that's in here. One thing I want to bring your attention to is this box right here in bold that says language. And I want to point this out because it's easy to confuse this box that says language, which refers to the language that the resource is in, French, English, Spanish, uh, versus this little checkbox down here where it says apply language of cataloging limiter. As you all know, uh, we here at Stanford use English language records a language of cataloging in English. So we uh, this is my default setting right here. I always am looking for a English language cataloging record. Um, sometimes I don't find anything, uh, no English language records for my resource. And so I might uncheck that box and perform my search again to see if I could find a foreign language record as it might be helpful for me to derive an original uh, record from. So let me demo, let me show you first that all of these are very powerful limiters here at the bottom. Another important uh, limit, limit that I use a lot is this one that starts, it says any or DLC. If you choose source DLC, that will also include PCC records. So perhaps, you know, you might be searching something that's got a lot of records and we are looking for the copy that is most likely to have subject headings and a call number, in which case you'll probably want to limit your search to this DL, source DLC to get a better copy. I'm going to go back to the any. Uh, you can play around with some of these other, these are pretty self-explanatory. If you just try the pull down menus, you can see what the, the different formats are, books, maps, serials, sound recordings, etc. And uh, I also sometimes use this years box. So I'll show, I'll show you that in just a moment. So perhaps let's say I'm doing a search. Um, here's a title. I'm just doing a keyword title. I'm not doing a title phrase, but I could, if I wanted to, I could select the index to search this as a phrase. 
So, uh, but right now I'll just search it as a keyword title, a title keyword. Now let's take a look at the results that we get. So I see 11 results that have these words as a uh, keyword a title somewhere in the field. Most of these records you can see that's a, uh, it, it's in the title field, but apparently these last two records, that title appears somewhere else in the record. Let me take a quick moment to show you at this point that you can resize your columns. You can, uh, adjust the width of any of these columns to suit your needs. You can move these things around and uh, adjust it to your needs. Also, let me take a moment to point out that you can also sort by any of these columns. You can sort by the title, you can sort by the name, the publisher, or the date. So sometimes you get a long list and you know that you're looking for a resource that was published probably somewhere in the 30s, but you don't wanna wade through a million records. You can, for example, uh, click on this date tab here and it'll sort all of your records by the date of publication. So this is very helpful. I also use this a lot to sort records by, I'm looking just for, uh, this D is for Library of Congress. That symbol uh, tells you that this is a record created by the Library of Congress. This P tells you that this is a record created uh, as part of the PCC program for cooperative cataloging. So these are better, should be better records. And so I might ignore the rest of these and just select these records. Um, I'm gonna perform my search again. Perhaps maybe I didn't find my edition or the copy that I was looking for. So let's take a look, try it again. I'm going to uncheck the box that says apply language of cataloging limiter. Let's take a look at what we get now. So instead of 11 results, I see 25 records. So quite a quite a few more records uh, without uh, without that language limiter. So we can see over here, we can see, you know, which records we are held, et cetera. And under um, cataloging language, cat L for language of cataloging, you can see we have quite an assortment of Spanish, French, German, English, et cetera. Uh, and that is the language of cataloging. Again, I can sort these, I can click on the top and sort. Now I've got them in alphabetical order so I can see all my English language records together, French, German, Spanish, et cetera. I'm going to perform a new search. You can either, you know, X this box out and close it, or you can just come over here and prompt, use the icon again to prompt a new search. Um, let's try uh, another search. I just want to demonstrate. So I'm going to search for uh, a book with the title Stanford University. And uh, let's see what happens, shall we? Oh no, too many records found for your search. Please change or simplify your search again. Oh my goodness, so let's see what I can apply. Well, let's see, I happen to know that my author's name is Smith. Um, I, you know, I, I know that my book was published in this century, so I'm going to use the years uh, box right here just to, and I'm putting a hyphen, so I want anything published from 2000 onwards. You can, you can go 2010, you can play around, or you can go just a single year, works published in 2000, etc. So you can, you um, use that that field I find very helpful. And perhaps I only want books. I don't want any serials. I'm only looking for a book. So now I have applied a number of, of uh, limitations on my search. And let's perform the search again and see if that if that helps narrow down. Oh good, five records. That's a lot more reasonable to uh, take a look at just five records to see if any of those are the one that I'm looking for. Uh, last but not least, I think I'll wrap it up and uh, just bring your attention to the fact that you can clear your entire search at the bottom. Maybe, you know, I don't want to have to manually uh, change each field. You can just click on clear search and now you're back to your, your starting box. And I think that was everything I was supposed to cover in my demo. I am now going to turn it over to um, Magda, who's going to uh, demonstrate command line searching and some special searches. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Hi, everyone. Now I will show you how to search OCLC connection using the command line search. To get started, go to connection and click on the search button. 
or press F2 to open the search word cap box. So what is the command line search? It's a single string where you can search for records by using keywords, numeric and derived data, and more. Please note that you can't combine the search in the command line with any other search or limiters from the word, a keyword, numeric area, uh, and here the drop down on the command line will display your last 10 searches. I will start here with searching numeric data in the command line. For example, if you search for an ISBN only, you can enter the ISBN without any index lib. Omit any hyphens and include the letter X if it exists. Click OK or press Enter, and you will retrieve the result if it's there. For searching any other numeric data, add the index label at the beginning of the search, such as adding NO colon for searching OCLC control number, like in this example. The OCLC control number is located in the top left corner of the record. Optionally, you can proceed the control uh, uh, number when you search it with asterisk or number sign. In the command line, you can search data using individual index label as in this example. Here, I search for a title phrase only. You can also combine the search commands and Boolean operators such as and, or, etc., to limit the search results as desired. Here is the example I used. In this example, you will see that I used the personal name word Ahmed and the publisher name word Naufal and the title word name, uh, it's in Arabic script. So you can mix your search and it should work fine. As we see here, it retrieved the record. So we can also browse terms in a specific index using the scan command, like in this example here, when I want to browse for personal name or James Henry. Please notice that I used here some uppercase and lowercase letters, and it should be fine. OCLC will retrieve the results, well, uh, even if they are mixed. And as you see here in this screen, you can browse for personal name, James, Henry, and the results here are 16 records. However, OCLC system ignores the stop words in keyword search such as A, but, etc. To use any of these stop words in your search, include them in quotation marks. Limiters and the slash qualifier can be used in the command to limit the search results, as in this example here. So here I'm looking for books in the language English, and uh, I use the Zabulian operator and, and the title word wizard. I want to look uh, for them on box format and the publication date to be between 1960 and 1965. You can use just hyphen five and the slash here and then as a limiter and then I'm looking for them in Library of Congress records. Click OK. And here I retrieve a list of 24 records. A copy of the slides containing links to the alphabetical list of bibliographic records indexes and the detailed command line search guidelines will be shared after the meeting. Okay, now I will show you a few tips for navigating the search results. In the last example that I already retrieved this results here, 
if I want to open two records at the same time, how can I do it now? So let's imagine that I want to open this record. So I will just double click. And I will go to View tab and I will bend it. Then I will go to Window tab and I will choose one of display options here that I prefer like this one. And now I can just click the other records that I want to open it. And now I have both of them opened and I can just compare between them. All right. Numeric search. As we know now, you can search numeric data using the command line or keyword numeric search area. Here is a short list of the most often used numeric indexes. We already covered the ISBN and the OCLC number, but as for ISSN, you will need to use the IN colon if uh, uh, you will search it in the command line or select it from the list if you will search it in keyword numeric search area. Let's see one example. So if I will search it in the command line here, for the ISTSTN, you will uh, keep the hyphen as is. Here is the list of records. I can open any one of them. And you will see that the ISSN is here. As for LCCN, sometimes we search records using the LCCN. You will need to use LN column and then the LCCN number should be number. So here. As for publisher number, Include numbers and letters as is in and omit punctuation marks. All right. So search non-Latin script records. In this part, we will talk a little about some guidelines for searching non-Latin script records in OCLC connection. It's very important about the Unicode that the non-Latin script search terms must be based on Unicode. Otherwise, the search will not yield any results. Connection client supports creating WordCat search keywords using the following non-Latin scripts in this list, Arabic, Armenian, Bengali, and the other scripts as you see here. OCLC connection supports Arlen 21, Arabic, Cyrillic, Hebrew, and Latin script keyboards. And it, uh, it also supports using Microsoft Windows input keyboards to enter scripts. The full guidelines for search non-Latin record, records in this link too. All right. Here are a few examples for searching non-Latin script records. So use either script data or romanized Latin script equivalent data to search non-Latin records. Here you can use, for example, the Cyrillic script or the romanized data, and you will retrieve the same results. Non-Latin script word or phrase can be searched in all applicable search options in search word cat in command line and the keyword numeric search index. So as you see here in this example, I, uh, the search here to search the, the author word Mahmoud and the title word, it's Arabic script word, so it works. And you can also mix between them as you see here, the romanized data and the original script.
Here, you can add the same qualifiers using the Latin script to both Latin and non-Latin script searches. As we see here, this is a Hebrew title that I can just limit my search only for format books and the publication year 2021. And please don't use derived searching for non-Latin scripts, but it can be used for the Romanized data only. And that's all for me. Now Greta will talk to us about searching the media formats. Please take it away, Greta. <laughs> okay. Greta, I think you're muted. Greta? Can you not hear me? Okay, my apologies, everybody, for forgetting to unmute and also losing my commands, which are now at the top of the screen. So uh, let me start over with that. My apologies. Um, I wanted to give you a couple of tips with the videos that they're, they often have really short or common titles. And so those can be a problem with searching. And some of them have no dates on the packaging, particularly some of the many ones that we get from small producers uh, rather than big commercial producers. So let me go back to um, OCLC and resume where I left off with my search for a title word for Elvis. And you see what happens, I get too many results here. So let me start um, adding limiters to this. And um, I'll point out that they're the, the same ones that are um, over here in, the, in, the, um, in these boxes that were uh, demonstrated by, uh, by Margaret Magda. So what I'm going to do is type in VIS for visual material. So I do Elvis slash VIS. And I'm going to put in years, too, because I can do that, too. So I want to do 2022 to 2023. And this time, I get a much more manageable search result. Um, so those are tricks for, um, for dealing with um, common titles. Here's another trick. This is the super secret ancient OCLC search. Um, it was a, a combined search of, of, uh, of a, a personal name, um, like a director or star, uh, and a title. So let me do L-U-H-R comma E-L-V-I. So this is four of one and four of the other. Um, and this really only works if the words are fairly uncommon. I don't think it would, I'm not sure it would work with Smith and Stanford, um, but you see, I get um, a list of, um, of things starting with ELVI with the name LUHR appearing somewhere in the, in the record. Um, another tip about videos. Uh, you're holding the video and you've got the container and you're taking the title off the container to search. Um, but videos are supposed to be cataloged from the title screen. And the title screen is not always the same as what's on the container. This is especially true of foreign films where you may have a container, something that's marketed to an English language audience. But when you 
turn the film on, the credits are in, you know, whatever the original language is. So this can be hard when you're searching to realize that, oh, yeah, I actually did pull up the right record because, you know, the title might be completely different from what you searched for. Here's an example of that. Um, you can see I'm searching for the title Corpus Christi, and I get three records that don't have Corpus Christi in the in the um, uh, in the 245 field. Three of them are, are um, have Polish um, titles. Two of those have a parallel title with Corpus Christi. One of them I don't see Corpus Christi at all, but I would see it if I pulled up the record. But that's a tip for um, um, for the occasions when your when your title is uh, different on the container. It, you may do a search and it looks like you've pulled up something completely strange, but it, it might actually be what you're looking for. So just be aware of that that uh, quirk of, uh, of videos. Fortunately, one nice easy tip with videos is that many, many of them, uh, particularly ones from, um, from commercial uh, publishers, have a UPC code. So if you've got the handy UPC code, you can go over, I'm going to clear this search. You can go over and use the standard number search, which is SN. You can do it in the command line, but I never remember it. So I just put it right there. And so I hit that and I get three records, which is you know better than a whole screen full of records. So I want to talk also about eBooks. Uh, we are you know, getting a lot of those. And the thing with ebooks is that um, very frequently they're a copy of a print book. And you may or may not want to see the, the print book copies. So, for example, search this ebook and I get two records. I get the record um, for an electronic copy and I get uh, the record for the print copy. And so, if I don't want to see that, um, I can do a slash here. COM for computer and search that and I get only the ebook copy. And um, another, you can search for various um, types of materials. For example, I can search audio recording um, by doing slash REC. This should get either musical or spoken word recordings of this. And so you can see, I get quite a few of this one, which is a musical one. Um, you can search for maps, back up and do MAP, take out these other words. So that's a place name and I get four maps with Babylonia in, in them. Um, I also need to show you how to import a record into Folio, since this is the main purpose of doing this. So um, what I'm going to do now is show you, um, Magda showed you briefly where the OCLC number is. Let me show you again. I'm going to go to this one that we did a few minutes ago. And here's the OCLC number up in the upper left between OCLC and the held by right up right up here. Um, so copy that number. So now I have to go to Folio uh, and uh, let me go to Folio again. Share that. And so I have to go to inventory. So I'm in inventory and up here there's an action. Uh, buttons blue, and I click on that, and it gives me a bunch of actions, which includes import. So click import, make sure it says OCLC WorldCat, and enter that OCLC number that you copied, and click that, and it thinks for a while. It's thinking for quite a while. And it's queued for import, but not yet available. Um, that usually means it does show up in a few minutes, but it did. It was successful. It did import the record. So um, um, usually you can search for it in a minute or so, or you, usually it's there immediately. So um, I also want to show you how to overlay a record. That's just importing a record where there's no um, um, no record already in um, in 
portfolio, but sometimes there's a record already in folio and you're going to want to overlay that. And you can search for that record. In this case, I'm using the um, the um, record ID from, um, from um, Symphony and I'm going to search that. And I don't know why I'm not getting a record. <laughs> this happened to me earlier. I'm not sure what is going on with this. Let me try. Oh, now it does it. Who knows? So anyway, uh, now I get this this record, and you can see here's the, the the title shows up in inventory, and then here's the individual record. Um, now I'm going to um, stop share for a minute while I go back over to OCLC. And uh, wait a minute, let me share that again. Share OCLC. And let me do a search here for this record. And I get three records here, and this is the one I want. So click on that record. Again, I go to the OCLC number that's up here in the upper left, copy that, make sure that gets copied there, <laughs> copy that. and. Um, now I'll go back to the inventory. You'll notice now that there's two action buttons, uh, one of which I can't see. Oh, here it is, because it keeps getting covered by the Zoom controls. This is the old action one that you looked at before that had import in it. But we want to overlay this record, not just simply import it. So we go to the one that's on the pane that show, is showing the individual instance record. So we go to that one and we click overlay source bibliographic record. So I click that and we get the same box again. Um, want to make sure it says OCLC WorldCat, you put in the OCLC number and you click import again and we'll see what happens. Let's see if it gets queued again. It's thinking. Ah, it does say they updated, yay. And so actually if you go over to here, to actions and view source. Let's see if this actually, we've had some trouble. Yeah, we've been having some trouble with some of these older records that I've been overlaying um, uh, since the uh, um, the data was taken a while ago in, in, and loaded into this, uh, loaded into Folio. Um, um, I was picking older records to overlay and for some reason, some of these <laughs> Turkish ones are not overlaying, but anyway, that's the method that you, that you do that. So, um, I guess that's all I had to say. So um, back to Kevin, I believe. Thanks, Greta. Um, we're going to do a a last minute change of plans. Um, I guess uh, we catalogers have been a chatty group. So I can't hear you, Kevin. Oh, really? Hold on. Kevin, we can yeah, let me stop sharing. Um, can you hear me now? Thank you. Okay, so yeah. Barely. I, I have it up. this barely. Do I need to yell into this thing? Okay, so <laughs> um, we're going to have a last minute change of plans here because um, we've gone a little over our our uh, original um, time limit that I we self imposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead to a, um, a just the last section. I'm going to share my screen one more time. And I'm going to say that uh, we're going to talk about um, troubleshooting. This is just one slide. And there's this issue. There, there are two issues that come up with OCLC connection that are pretty common, are known issues. And I don't know if we will, and we're talking about connection client here. Um, I don't know if these will, they haven't been fixed in a while. And what I'm going to show you is one of them is something that happens quite often is when you minimize the um, the OCLC connection window and it gets stuck down in the bottom of your system tray or whatever this thing's called. Um, sometimes you, when you want to maximize it, make it big again, you click on it repeatedly and nothing happens. Um, well, that time it did, but sometimes it does. Sometimes you'll click on it and it won't actually open. And there's a quick fix to this. Um, it's, I don't know if it's, it's probably written somewhere, but basically, uh, oh, are you actually seeing my screen? You are seeing my screen. 
Okay. No, we're not. No, we're You're not. not. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I think I forgot to click the button that says actually share the screen. Okay. Share screen. Can you see it now? Yes. I hope it looks like yes. Yes. Okay. So sometimes you, min you minimize your connection window and it goes down to the bottom and you click on the, the icon down here at the bottom of the screen and it doesn't reopen. So the quick fix to this is you just click on it. So basically you're selecting that icon and on a Windows machine, you would hit the Windows key and you press the up arrow and it should reopen. Um, this is, like I said, this is a known issue that, um, and this is the fix that we have been told. I, I don't know if this will ever be fixed. I think as Robert was saying, we, we may be moving on to a new uh, system anyway, eventually. I think that the OCLC connection browser version is going away first or is going to be stopped being supported first. And then the client, who knows, um, it may eventually go away too. Um, the other issue that we have um, seen is sometimes when you open up a, a bib record, and I'm just I'm gonna fake this because I can't I can't make it happen consistently. But sometimes if you have a bib record open, it'll open very it'll open minimized, right? And that's fine because for this you can just click on the the, the button to make it full window. But sometimes it minimizes itself under like it's like this where you can't even get to it. Um and it it doesn't happen consistently, but it does happen often enough that you just have to know what to do. So if this ever happens to you, um, you can actually just go up to the window uh, menu and click tile horizontally or tile ver vertically, whichever, and it'll bring it back out from underneath the underneath your menu and you should be able to open it. Um, it's not this doesn't happen to me as consistently as the fact uh, as when I minimize something down to the, the tray down here and I can't get it to open back up. Like right now, it's not opening back up. So um, just we just wanted to make sure that we set those two sort of uh, explain those two issues and gave solutions to that because that they can be frustrating if you don't know what to do. Um, and with that, we are. At 2.14, I, we did want to leave some time for questions and answers. Um, the part of the presentation that I skipped were um, sort of tips and tricks on setup, a customization of the interface. And so I think what we'll do is I'll try to write up some documentation for that, or maybe I'll just make a video and post it. I don't know. Um, but we'll, we'll get that information to you unless there's nobody with any questions and I can just run through it right now. But um, does anyone have any questions? I'm gonna stop my share. Um, and, you know, we covered a lot of information today. Um, there were a lot of um, different searches being done. And I, what you, what we need to remember is that everyone here that presented today has been working for a long time in OCLC connection, and we all have our own preferences of how to perform searches. Some people like to use the command line. I I almost never use the command line. I just go to the boxes and use the drop down menus. Um, but I have learned this last week, you know, prepping for this, that the command line is very powerful. So there are different ways of performing each search. And if anyone wants to talk about it or um, ask questions, you know, please use the Slack channel. We we've, we've got a good we've got a good question in the chat. Oh. Um, will it be possible to import a record from the online save file to Folio? I think I know the answer, and I think you need the OCLC record number. And but I'm going to let others weigh in on that because I'm not positive. I think. The way that the way that Greta showed the import, um, I believe they're taking the record from the map, the OCLC database. The, this is the record of record. Um, so whatever record is actually saved in the OCLC database is the one that is going to be imported. 
Um, I know there is an alternate way of pushing a record from OCLC into Folio, but that has not been fully developed yet. And at this time, we can't overlay a, an existing Folio record. Um, I'm not sure what the status of that will be. Um, but I think that that's, um, I hope that that would be possible at some point, because I, I do that a lot too, is where I will edit a record in OCLC and save it in the online save file and then want to push it into Symphony. And I can do that, but I can't, I don't know if that's possible in Folio yet. So Juanita follows up. So all we need to import or overlay a record is the OCLC number, and I could search in WorldCat to find it. And that's absolutely true. You can always just go to WorldCat and just search for that OCLC record number. It's just that the client has so much more functionality. So we wanted to demonstrate the, the client because many of us will be working in the client. But you're absolutely right that all you need is that OCLC record number. You're absolutely right. Um, Elizabeth has a, an excellent question. Uh, thank you for the information. Is there an online tutorial we can also look at to solidify what we have learned here? And there are some, there are tons and tons of online documentation as well as uh, videos that have been created by other institutions. There's a good one, uh, a short one made by, well, there, they're of different lengths, depending on what your needs are. There, OCLC has one, but it's like 90 minutes long. So I don't know if you want to sit through an hour and a half. Cornell has a briefer video, which we can share uh, that I thought was very helpful. So yes, we can definitely follow up with more online tutorials to help solidify, absolutely. I have a question, that's okay. Um, just based on where we are with folio staging and testing now, um, and perhaps this has been covered elsewhere, and I'm sorry, but are we only, is it only advisable to play with importing OCLC records and overlaying them um, in folio stage, not test? Or does it matter? I think we can import anywhere. It, I mean, not anywhere. We can import into both stage and test. I, I think stage and folio stage and folio test are two, what, two separate servers that are, and they're doing different things at different ones, but I, I don't think either of them are off limits for practicing what we are have been doing today. Yeah. Um, um, can I add to that, Kevin? This is Yael. Yeah. It's just, um, for, for, it's worth following along in like the folio channels just what's available because I think this week test is being updated so it's not available to us to use to practice on so stages um, and so they just have they're just being updated at different times so if you're looking for a specific record it might like to um, update it it might not be in the one you're looking in because it hasn't been updated recently um, so stage currently is the more updated one but next week it'll probably be test because it's being updated this week. Makes sense. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, we will. Um, I think I'm trying to figure out the best way to to disseminate our information. Slack channel. Um, our newly we created have a Slack channel called Connection Users. I and it. You are on Slack, you can add this channel. It should be open to everyone um, at Stanford. Um, and we will definitely uh, send out information there. Um, I will probably also send it to sort of general folio um, uh, email list. And I will try to contact people at each library, coordinate library, and um, at least one person from each coordinate library and uh, branch and department that I know of who who attended this um, this session so that we can at least get this information out there. Um, eventually we're going to have most of this information on the folio um, folio training website that Stanford's putting together, but that that's still in its very early stages and is very much under construction at this point. So um, I don't it's not ready yet. Um, I can't share a link uh, 
lots of lots of stuff is happening all at the same time and we're still trying to figure out exactly how this training is going and we just happen to be the first official training of, of the folio um, implementation so we are making things up as we go along um all right does are there any other questions i don't want to i i don't think i have time to start on the um tips and tricks and customizations section because that's going to take me a little while. So I would prefer to just do that and share a video with you all or perhaps a documentation or both. I, I need to figure out what works best. Um, but since I was ready to present, I was I could just make a Zoom video and share it. Um, any last questions for anyone? I know we covered a lot today. Please stay in touch. Um, please use the Slack channel to ask questions. Um, there may have been things that were covered today that just went by too quickly, and um, we will make this video available, this recording available once once it's ready, and I figure out where to post it. I'm not sure yet. And Slack channel. In the Slack channel. Well, I can't post a video in the Slack channel, but I'll post it on the Google Drive somewhere, um, and everyone should have access to it. And I think, you know, if there aren't any immediately immediate questions um, or great needs at this point, um, I think what we'll do is I will we'll share the link to the documentation list. Oh no, wait, I don't wanna do that yet. The documentation is in a folder, a Google Drive folder that is not open yet because I don't have access to, I don't have permissions to open it to everyone at this point. So I will just share with you the document that has the links to the, this is the same document that I shared at the beginning. And from there, eventually you will be able to get into a lot of documentation that we have created uh, specifically for um, folio implementation and for connection. And feel free to say, share your tips and not just ask questions, but if you discover oh, yeah. something neat that you didn't know before, feel free to post it to the Slack channel and share it with all of us. I've been searching Connection Client for 20 years, and in preparation for this training, I discovered a whole bunch of things I didn't know that OCLC could do. So I think most of us uh, felt felt the same way. So please share. Definitely. All right. Um, well, if that's if that's uh, there aren't any are there any last questions, I'm gonna say in thirty seconds we're gonna we're lawn gonna call party it early. lawn we're party call it, yeah so all right well see, thanks thanks everyone for coming um, we appreciate your listening and I know Margaret wants to say something so <laughs> I just hope to see you all at the lawn party that's all oh. Well, I don't know if we were all invited to the lawn party, Margaret. I'm sorry. But I, <laughs> I think people in tech services, go enjoy your party. Um, all right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, Thank thanks you. Thanks for sitting through this. And um, please ask questions on Slack. We'll see you all, all right. later. Bye-bye.